Hi, good to have you here again. This video series is about Google Vertex AI pipelines, the by far easiest way to run machine learning pipelines. Now, why are you here? Maybe you're new to ML pipelines, perhaps you're already using Vertex AI pipelines and just looking for some best practices, or maybe you're also having trouble maintaining and managing your Kubeflow instance on Kubernetes, or perhaps your ML team is still growing and you're wasting too much time implementing the ML pipelines yourself. So no matter what topic you're here, don't worry, I got you covered. We go into all the nitty gritty details of Vertex AI pipelines. And if you like the series, subscribe and leave me a comment below. Enough talking, let's get started. Let us start with a bold statement. Machine learning teams don't need Kubernetes. Thanks to Google, our daily work with machine learning pipelines got way easier. And how that works, we see during this video. Google Vertex AI pipelines is a serverless product to run Kubeflow or TFX pipelines. If you are not familiar with Kubeflow or TFX, don't worry too much. Everything you need to know we covered during the video, and I also have a deep dive article for you in the video description below. ML pipelines are there to connect the various steps of your ML solution. Vertex AI pipelines supports two different types of production grade pipelines, TensorFlow Extended and Kubeflow pipelines. For this video, we focus on Kubeflow with Vertex AI pipelines, and not uh, with TFX. Kubeflow is built to run on top of Kubernetes. Running a Kubernetes cluster can be challenging and time intensive, and that's why Google introduced Vertex AI Pipelines, a product to run pipeline serverless. So there is no need for a self-managed Kubernetes cluster anymore. And this way, your machine learning teams can focus on what they got hired for, and that's hopefully machine learning. Little disclaimer, Vertex AI Pipelines, of course, also runs internally on top of Kubernetes, but thanks to Google in a way that ML teams don't need to interact with it. If you watched my other videos or read some of my articles, so here's something repeatedly. Things are simple until you make them complicated. And exactly because of that, we start with the most simple pipeline possible, just two components doing a bit of string manipulation without digging too deep into the details yet. If you're already familiar with that, don't worry, we get to the best practices and deep dive topics very soon. Because we are implementing a Kubeflow pipeline, we need to import the required Kubeflow pipeline modules. We go over each of those modules, starting with the first one, the component. A Vertex AI pipeline consists of multiple steps, where each step is defined by exactly one component. The component contains the code that this pipeline step should perform, and it might produce some kind of output as input for the next component. What we see here is called function-based component. It's the simplest one. We just write a Python function. With the component decorator provided by the Kube for Pipeline SDK, we declare that that function is a pipeline component. A component can be anything like reprocessing, training, evaluation, or deployment, anything you might need in your pipeline. The pipeline itself contains the components we created, again, defined by a pipeline decorator. As you can see, the output from the first component is the input for the second component. And finally, the last step needed is our compiler. The compiler takes our pipeline and creates a pipeline specification as a JSON. That's all we need to run our pipeline. We can now go over to Vertex AI pipelines in the UI or via API or via SDK, upload the pipeline specification, and the pipeline starts running. You see, just a few lines of code. And with that basic knowledge, it's time to do our first demo, just so you get the feeling how easy it is. And after the demo, we go back to the slides, and I cover some more of the advanced topics that you need if you want to use Vertex AI pipelines in production. As always, we start with a Google Colab notebook. The first thing we need to do, we need to install the dependencies. I already did this because it takes a couple of minutes, the first thing we need is the Google um, AI Platform or Vertex AI SDK. Don't get confused. AI Platform, the old product, and Vertex AI, the new one, share the same SDK. And then we need Kubeflow pipelines in order to build our pipeline. The component in, in, the, in the middle, we cover it later. It's a, basically a set of predefined components ready to use for you. But we cover that later on in the video. So we are installing the dependencies. It takes a couple of minutes. And then you need to restart your runtime in order to take the latest dependencies. Then we do a bunch of imports. 
We have a bunch of more imports here than I just had in my slides because we do a lot of other stuff during this video series. But what we need for the basic pipeline is just the compiler, the pipeline itself, and the component. That's all we need. Then I do the authentication in order to, to allow the notebook, the Google Colab notebook, to communicate with the Google Cloud platform. So I do the basic authentication here. What you need to do is just execute the cell and then you get a pop-up where you select your Google account. Then I set uh, some environment variables like project ID and the pipeline route. So every time we, we uh, execute the pipeline, we create artifacts. Those need to be stored at the pipeline route. We cover that also later on during, during the video. So ignore it for now and the project ID. And then we initiate AI platform. It's, it's also for Vertex AI. And then we create our first component. Actually, our first two components. The first component is taking two strings, A and B, and it's just uh, con con concatenating them. And the second component is taking the output from the first component is, and is doing a reverse string. So we have two components. And as you, as you can see, it's just a Python function with the component decorator here, just imported from the Kubeflow pipeline SDK. And then we also define a named tuple, so we actually can see our outputs in the UI itself. You see that when we switch later to the UI and see how the pipeline is executed. Just keep that in mind, we cover that soon. And then we build our pipeline, and you can see, again, we have a decorator here, the pipeline decorator. We define a name for the pipeline, we give the pipeline root, and we also have two parameters as input for our pipeline. And then we have our two components, the first and the second one. And you can see the parameters of our pipeline are the input for the first component. And the input for the second component is the output from the first component. So let me execute that as well. And the last step we need is our compiler. So we take our pipeline, the, our basic pipeline here, and create a pipeline specification as a JSON. So we now have a pipeline specification. We go into the details of the pipeline specification itself later on, but just a quick look, you see there is a local file, a JSON file, and if you have a look into it, it contains a, a JSON with our pipeline. We go over all the details here later on. And the last step, we need to uh, build our pipeline job, so we do that, and we also input two parameters, a first string and second string, and our pipeline specification as a JSON. And then, we run the job. So the pipeline is now created. And if we now go to Vertex CI, and on the left side, you can see pipelines. And here you have your pipeline once. You see, we just executed it. It's already done because it's, really, it's a small pipeline. It's already taken from the cache. So we can have a look into it. And you can see our two components. So the first one and the second one. And you can also see the input parameters and the output parameters with our named tuple, after and before. So we inputted uh, this there, the stressed, and got this there as output. As you could see, there is no magic. It's indeed very simple. But if we're honest with ourselves, the real questions and challenges start when we start putting things to, into production. The next topics I cover are more loosely coupled. It contains everything you might need in the production pipeline some best practices, some more advanced features, and findings I had with customers. The pipeline you can see here on the right is from my own product, and it's executed around 15 times a day, depending on the customer workloads. I didn't have a single issue since I migrated my workloads to Vertex AI a few months ago, and this allowed me to fully shut down my Kubernetes cluster because it was only used to run Kubeflow pipelines. The first thing we usually need in a production-like environment, and generally with machine learning, are larger machines more CPU, more memory, and GPUs. Of course, depending on your use case. With Vertex AI pipelines, each component runs in its own job. That means we can define the resources needed on a component level. For example, a high CPU machine for pre-processing and a GPU only for training. On the left side, we see how we can set up a CPU and memory, and on the right, how we can assign a GPU of a specific type. If we don't define a machine type, the default one at the moment is the E2 standard 4, that equals to 4 vCPUs and 16 GB of memory. It's important to know that there is no auto-scaling involved. The component 
can use exactly the resources defined and not more. Let's get back to the components. At the very beginning in our demo, we covered the function-based components. But there is a second type, container-based components. Those can be really useful if you're not using Python or the steps of your pipeline are already implemented in a dockerized way. If you ask me which one to choose, it doesn't really matter. A pipeline in a pure Python function properly added to a Git repository can be as managed as good as a container-based component. And for now, we focus on the function-based components. Now let's, let's dig just a bit deeper into components. The component decorator used to define a component compiles the function into a component specification as a JAML file. You can make it visible by adding an additional parameter to the component decorator. The component specification that gets created contains information like the metadata, the name and the description of our component, the input and output of our component and its types, and the actual implementation of our uh, component, our actual Python code. Creating a component specification is different if you're using a function-based or container-based component. The component specification for the function-based component is created when a component is compiled using the Kubeflow SDK. And for the container-based component, we need to write that component specification on our own. Now let's get back to the notebook and see it in action. So again, we have our, our simple component. And you can see we can define a parameter output component file which writes the component specification to a file, to a JAML file. And if we execute this, we see that we have a new file. And if we have a look into the file, you see that there is the inputs of our component. We have the outputs and obviously the types. And we also have a base image. So this container, uh, this component is using a Python 3.7 base image. And there is also our code. As you can see, the JAML file contains everything that is needed to execute this component. We can use the specification to load a component as part of our pipeline. Uflow pipeline provides two ways to load a specification from file and from URL. This makes it very easy for us to reuse pipe, re pipeline components and share them between projects or even teams. Components, for example, could be uploaded to Google's AI Hub and your teams can search and reuse them. Google provides predefined and ready-to-use components. You can simply install them via PIP. Those components integrate well with, with other Google products like AutoML, Vertex AI Endpoints, BigQuery, or other products. So if you're planning to use other Google products as part of your pi pipeline, first check if there is already a component ready to use. For example, if you plan to upload and deploy your trend model to Vertex AI Endpoints, there is a component that takes care of that. You just have to provide a couple of parameters. Now let's, let's go to the documentation again. And you can see we have a bunch of components here. We have the stable components, and we have also experimental components. So you need to check um, if you can use experimental components maybe in your production environment, maybe not, depending on your uh, internal requirements. And there are components that uh, integrate well with Vertex AI, for example, but also with, with other Vertex AI products like data sets. So you can also create data sets with, with Vertex AI pipelines. And you can also use data proc or even data flow if you have larger uh, pre-processing needs. And there are more experimental components. So you can also initiate your AutoML training jobs from within the Vertex AI pipeline and also the other uh, AutoML products like forecasting, for example. So if you have something other than just your ordinary training code, something which integrates with other Google products, have a look into the documentation. Parameters are used to pass data between components. In other words, Parameters represent data that our component either uses as an input or produces as an output. Parameters are used for small data types like int, float, string, bool, dict, or lists of them. But with machine learning, we usually also work with more complex data structures. And for that, we use artifacts. Similar to parameters, artifacts are also used to pass data between components or even to visualize and store information. In general, Artifacts are used for larger and more complex data, like training data, for example. All artifacts are automatically stored in a Google Cloud Storage bucket based on the bucket, bucket path we defined during the pipeline creation. It is important to understand that most artifacts, like data sets and model artifacts, are nothing more than a simple reference, a file path. Keep that in mind. It helps better to understand how artifacts actually work. 
Each pipeline one produces metadata and ML artifacts, like hyperparameter, data, the code itself, or the accuracy of our model. And they are necessary for the reproducibility of our pipeline. We need them to understand the changes in the performance of our model. So we can't compare a pipeline one if we don't know what kind of data was used to train the model on. So it's important to track everything that goes in and out of our components and through our pipeline. This process is called model lineage, and it helps us to answer questions like what data was used to train the model on, which pipeline one produced the most accurate model, and what hyperparameters were used to train the model. Pipelines can be also parameterized. We saw that already in the basic uh, demo. So you can pass parameters when running the pipeline. This is a great feature if you need to run the same pipeline for different data set or specific to your, to your users, maybe. This is the UI you can see here, but in general, generally everything we can do in the, in the UI, we can also do by the API or the SDK. Per default, our function-based component run on a Python 3.9 base image. If, for example, you're using TensorFlow with GPUs, you need to use a GPU-optimized TensorFlow base image instead of the Python 3.9 base image. Same applies to XGBoost or any other machine learning framework. Now make sure you use the right base image to fully utilize the hardware resources. We had a customer who was running XGBoost on a TensorFlow base image and XGBoost was not correctly using all the CPU cores, so make sure you use the right base image. Also, um, there are pre-built containers you can use, so if you go to documentation, you can see a bunch of pre-built containers for TensorFlow, scikit-learn, so PyTorch, XGBoost, but you can also provide your own custom containers if needed. Python packages that are not part of your base image need to be installed. You just add them to the packages parameter and they are installed for this specific component. Please always use a specific version to prevent any unexpected behavior. Imagine Pandas releases a new version with a breaking change. Your pipeline will uh, suddenly fail in production if no version is specified. So please always pin your versions. I mentioned it already. Each component runs in its own job. That makes it easier for us to monitor the resource consumption on a component level. We can understand the component, uh, util component's utilization and can down or upgrade machines accordingly. If you're already using Kubeflow, you're familiar with those concepts. There is support for conditions, a way to run components only if a condition is met. Common use cases are the decision to deploy the model to production or not, depending on a defined condition. This can be either validating the model score against a certain threshold, or even comparing the model to the previously trained one. Vertex AI provides a quick way to compare pipeline runs. Metrics and parameters are stored and can be used to compare those pipeline runs. For example, we can compare our pipeline run to identify the pipeline run where the accuracy started to decrease. And thanks to the artifacts, we can understand and reproduce the issue because we have all the information needed. What you, what you see here is the UI, but you can also access the same data via SDK or API and even visualize it somewhere in your notebook if you want to. Each pipeline one stores artifacts in Google Cloud Storage. Those artifacts are needed to be accessed in subsequent components and additionally, they can be used for the reproducibility of our pipeline as we exactly know what data was used, for example. If you run a large number of pipeline jobs, consider setting up object lifecycle to delete files that are no longer needed. Vertex AI is not using the default service account. Instead, it uses a special one. You can find them on the IAM page. To view and add additional roles to the service agent, you need to enable the checkbox include Google-provided role grants. Those agents already provide access to BigQuery and Cloud Storage, for example. A full list can be found in the documentation. So if you have issues accessing other Google Cloud services from within Vertex AI pipelines, check if the service account has the right permissions to do so. And if you have a look at the documentation, you can see um, the Vertex AI service agent. If we scroll down a bit, you can also see the permissions this role has. So it has uh, permissions to AI platform, for example, BigQuery, AutoML, Dataflow, data labeling, and also to Google, Google Cloud Storage. So if you're using another product, make sure if it's not already included to add the permissions especially. If you're using any Google Client libraries, you usually don't need to define a project ID, as long as the client is running inside of the Google Cloud. That's because the project ID is automatically determined for an environment variables. In case of a Vertex AI component, an explicit specification of the project ID is required. 
The component run in a Google internal not accessible project, the Google managed Kubernetes environment, and not in your own project. So if you not if you don't define a project ID, it will fail with a forbidden error. In the error message, you see a different project ID. This is the Google internal not accessible project. So always define your project IDs. There are multiple reasons to interact with Vertex AI pipelines in a programmatically way. The most obvious one is to run your pipelines in an automatic way. We can do that in, in a different way, either directly via the API or via the Vertex AI SDK, which is nothing else than a web around the API. And if we look closely at the API documentation, we realize there's just one concept, pipeline runs. There is nothing like deploying your pipeline. We always need to think in terms of pipeline runs. Keep that in mind when you plan to implement CI/CD for your pipeline. Like with all serverless products, we only pay if we actually run our machine learning pipeline. Google has a fair price of, recording at the video today, of three US dollar cents per pipeline run, plus the cost for the resources needed, like the machine types and the GPUs you might need. I hope this video helped you get a better understanding of how you can use Vertex AI pipelines, some best practices. And yeah, if you like, subscribe, follow me. I will release more videos. Uh, we do a deep dive in a full scale production like uh, production like pipeline. And I also do a video about how you can implement the ICD for your vertex pipelines. See you there. Bye.